let's see how we can uh, um, start seeing the usefulness of filters. What are filters? Uh, the vast amount of uh, operators you can uh, you uh, you can add to your particles to your flow uh, as a filter option. Let's see what it does. So we create like 200 particles at time zero, and they're created at zero 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 because there is no position icon or nothing. And uh, let's say we spread them apart. Yeah, like way more. Yeah, and uh, give them a shape. A simple sphere is uh, more than enough for uh, our purpose. And uh, let's display them as geometry. There we are. So let's hide the grid. And yeah, this is going to be okay to, to start using the the filter option. So let's say before filters were added, let's say that you wanted to delete particles after uh, a certain um, uh, condition was met. For example, the simplest the particle age. So we had a time test. If particles were uh, um, sorry, yeah, event age or particle age doesn't matter. If this uh, let's say event age, right? If event age was greater than 10 plus or minus 3, send them out. And delete. Okay, so we don't need this because they're going to be deleted. And this is what happens. So and the once we reach from 7 to 13, they're all deleted, right? So uh, using the tests uh, to send out particles is the was the standard way in uh, in particle flow but since an anti flow as well until the addition of the filter option so let me show you we add the delete operator in the um, in line with the same event and then let's say that we add an event age condition so if the event age condition is greater than 10 plus or minus 30 percent so three more frames or three less frames delete uh, let's set this to continuous sorry there we are. So we are obtaining this very same result without using a test operator and without creating a new event. This is extremely useful when you have a bunch of operators and then you you forced to send out particles just because of a condition and then you have to copy and paste the operators. Instead, we, we can have everything in line. As you can see, uh, when using filters, this small icon appears. So it's really easy to see if in your flow there are filters and uh, understanding why some stuff isn't working. Maybe it's just because it's filtered. So as we can see, filters have this condition, this Boolean condition. It's either AND or OR. And you cannot mix them in the same uh, filter operation. So if you add, uh, for example, uh, positions at less than zero uh, this means that those two conditions needs to be met so it's gonna delete only the ones below zero after frame well let's say just straight on frame 10 right just to, to simplify things as you can see those two conditions are met so delete um, all the particles below zero in Z after frame 10. If we do this, then it's either reach frame 10 or be below zero. So when we reach 10, it's going to delete everything. We cannot mix um, condition. It's either AND or OR. Okay? So this is... Um, 
the very sim one of the simplest case, I believe. Let's um, get rid of this delete operator. Someone was asking um, how to grow up particles uh, in scale over time. And uh, in my opinion, well, you know how to do it. I mean, um, you can just add a scale operator and then uh, relative add and let's say one of five. This is gonna grow the particles over time. But how do you stop them? Um, the the answer before the filter, the existence of filter operator was having a property test and deciding uh, um, a scale after which the the operator should stop. So sending them out after a certain scale was reached. Let's do it. So let's say uh, let's check a scale that that is okay for us. I'm gonna use a display data which is uh, one of the best operators out there because it allows us to debug really easily our flows. So we get rid of this uh, BERT ID. We want to know the scale. It's gonna give us the the, the value. Um, it's not in percent but normalized to one. And um, so let's say that a value of four or five, five. We want to stop when the scale is 500%, around 500%. So what we're gonna do is just uh, add a scale um, X, Y, Z is uh, absolutely the same because um, I scaling, I'm scaling in a uniform way. So, sorry, this is the uh, icon that says that I'm scaling in a uniform way. So when scale X is uh, greater than then five. Um, this is gonna test true, and we're gonna send out to a to a new event, right? So the fault shading done, and that's it. So this is how we did it before the introduction of the uh, filters. We don't need to do this anymore because we just add a condition. So scale X. Um, it means, okay, so the condition says uh, this operator should uh, work on particles until those particles uh, satisfy this condition and the condition to this operator to work is that the scale is less than five. For all the particles that have a scale over than five, stop working. There it is. No need to do a test, no need to do a new operator. This is going to work. Also, um, using only uh, the scale, you cannot uh, add a variation because uh, we want the particles to grow, but if you add a, par a variation here, uh, for of 50 is gonna be for sorry uniform is gonna be a relative add 50 more or 50 less so if we do 50 less it's gonna be uh, 55 percent uh, sorry um, yeah 55 which means it's gonna scale down so it's gonna subtract Rel relative add but you can actually subtract as well so we're not gonna do this we're gonna add some variation here in the in the filter, let's say 30%, so it's gonna stop with a different, well, we can actually do, uh, okay, so here is more clear. So we can add variation on the growth. And remember also that um, you can also use the, the interpolation to, to make it more, uh, Uh, this is a bit too slow, maybe 0 to 0.5, but to make it more uh, less linear in time. Okay, so um, we can see that there are a bunch of conditions in uh, in the property type, but this is not uh, as many conditions as in the um, property test, for example. 
So what can we do uh, if we um, need to test for some other condition? That's quite easy. And um, let me show you, for example, uh, let's say that we want how to use a custom float to, to, to drive this, uh, this, this filters thingy. It's really easy. We just set a custom float, for example, let's say, okay, here we are. We want just 10% of those to grow up until uh, this scale condition is met, let's say 5 to 20, okay, so we scale them. Okay, I just want 10% of them. Easy, easy way, we add another condition. We give a random value, so each particle has a random value from 0 to 100, and all those with a false value is less than 10, or, or actually less or equal, they're going to be scaled. So just 10% of them, they're going to be scaled up until this value. But let's say that we, we're, um, we're testing for, for a, um, another thing. So let's save, um, I don't know, what can it be? Mm. Okay, let's do a funny, a funny thing. Let's let's do this. Let's check. So the scaling, we get rid of those of this. One second. The scaling in time without any filter, so they're gonna scale uh, as much as they want. So we're gonna add. Um, physics shape and let me check to let me uh, disable oh I did it already default gravity and ground collider I don't want that so they're gonna grow and uh, and uh, and collide each other right still I I want to uh, them to stop growing let's say when they touch each other easy peasy uh, we add a physics collision test and uh, we check for interparticle collision. So in the test action, if um, if they collide each other, let's say I'm gonna increment a custom float. Um, did collide? Okay. So whenever the the particles will collide each other, this is gonna uh, be more than zero because it's gonna be incremented, right? So let's let's hide this and let's check for the custom float. Okay, so they didn't collide yet, so it's zero. Uh, one suggestion I can give you is in cache, turn on the custom float caching so you can go back and forth and uh, having have this value displayed. If you don't, it's gonna give you a not a number L let me show you you just disable this you go forward and you go back not available see but if you cache it okay as you can see we have values more than zero because they're starting to collide okay I want them to I want the scale to stop as soon as they collide so it's really uh, easy and intuitive we're going to check for a custom float. Oops, sorry. For um, Where is it? Custom float. So when the custom float is greater than zero, uh, sorry, um, you should scale as soon as the custom float is um, equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, they didn't collide yet, right? So this condition did collide equals to zero. As soon as this is not zero anymore, it's gonna stop growing because the scale operator will stop 
uh, affecting particle because it's filtered by this. There it is. This is so easy and uh, in the, the, the thing is if you had to do before filters you had to add operators and do branching and copy operators from one uh, event to another and you can combine them you can combine a bunch of uh, floats for example you could test you could do property tests and instead of sending out uh, you could increment a custom float or you could save the test value in a custom float and then use this testing value to filter an operator instead of sending out this makes things way simpler in my opinion and uh, lets you create events only when needed so the flow is gonna be uh, easier easier to read faster because you don't have to copy operators from one event to another and uh, way more tidy so that's everything i know about uh, operator filters i hope this was useful for you uh, until next time bye